Hey, this is Attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today you're going to follow along as I get my EIN for my a new LLC that is a New Mexico LLC. So for those of you who don't know, an EIN, an employer identification number, is kind of like the social security number for an LLC or corporation or even a sole proprietorship business. It is the tax ID for your business and you also have to put it in many, many other places typically is what happens. So it's a great idea to go ahead and get your EIN when you start your business, whether it's a sole proprietorship, LLC, whatever. Now, technically for an LLC that is a one owner LLC that has not elected to be taxed as a corporation or anything like that, it's just a, being taxed as a sole proprietorship, you can use your social security number for it. I discourage people from doing that because you have to put on so many different forms. It just puts your social security number out there. And if you do eventually hire employees later, you're going to need EIN then anyway. Getting EIN, most people, is going to be free. It is free to apply for it. Occasionally, you need to hire someone to help you if you don't have a social security number. But if you have a social security number, you can do it for yourself online and it should work. So I'm going to go through filing this online so you can see the process. I will not let you see my social security number because I do have to give them my SSN. Um, but you'll see the process for filing in EIN. I've done other videos on this, but this is the first time I'm doing one where I'm actually going through the entire process and clicking all the buttons. So first you go to irs.gov, apply for an employer identification number online. Now, this is something you can only do Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm assuming it's because they have someone on site who's kind of monitoring the process at if a, someone tries to like mass file EINs and do some kind of fraudulent thing. Also, you can only do one EIN per responsible party per day. How I think they enforce that is through your IP address. Uh -huh. So if you try to, if let's say you made two or three LLCs and, and one of them is like your holding company LLC and then you have two other LLCs under it, you're gonna have to get the EINs on different days. So if you're gonna do it online and I recommend doing it online because if you file it by paper, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks, probably even longer, <laughs> Mommy, I pay months nowadays because they're so far behind. Okay, but you have to do this, you have to be, your business has to be located in the United States or US territories. You have to have a valid taxpayer ID number for the person who is applying for it, which is going to be a social security number or an ITIN, and you can only do one per day. You have to do it all in one session. You can't save and return it, but I mean, you can always start over. It's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and hit the apply online now button. It has this thing that comes up that says you're not allowed to um, use it for bad things and it can record you. Okay, so begin application. What is a legal structure for the EIN? This is not the tax, this is legal. So this is an LLC. Okay, you've chosen LLC, it's reminding you what an LLC is. You need to have already formed it. How many members are there gonna be? One, it is in New Mexico. There we go. Confirm that this is true. It's a single member LLC. It'll initially be classified as a disregarded entity. It's tax as a sole proprietorship but you can allow to have it taxed differently. Right now, I'm just having a tax sole proprietorship. It literally doesn't make any money, but in the future, I hope it will make a lot more money and be taxed as an S corp, but I'll elect that at that time. Why am I doing this? Because I started a new business. Tell us about the responsible party of the LLC. So this is about me. I am the responsible party. The responsible party doesn't necessarily have to be an owner. It could be a manager for the LLC. Um, so it could be Theoretically, your accountant could do this, but generally speaking, it's going to be the owner usually or one of the owners. This is the person who's going to be responsible for communications with the IRS. And somebody has to give the social security number or ITIM. All right, so I'm putting myself here and then inputting my social security number. And I check the box that I'm one of the owners because I'm the only owner. All right, so once I get through that, where is the LLC physically located? I'm going to be putting the address that is the... Um, address for my filing paperwork. I'm using this address to be consistent. Oops. So you also have to give a phone number. I'm putting my cell phone number, so I'm not showing that to you. Um, and do I want to use another address? No, I do not want to do this. 
Typically, it will also redo your address um, because it doesn't like how you formatted it. It's checking with the USPS's database. So I accept the database version. That's totally fine. So what is the legal name of the LLC? I actually always make sure that I pull up the actual articles of organization in this case, make sure I match it. If you use a comma or something, you're not going to be able to put that in here. This only accepts certain types of input. So you can put an ampersand and a hyphen, but no other kinds of punctuation. It doesn't accept a dot or a comma. So if it's like, if I had named my LLC epw.com LLC, I would have to like literally spell out the word dot. If it's a comma, I just drop the comma. Trade name is a, like a DBA. If you have that already, I'm not doing that because right now I haven't registered a DBA anywhere. It is in New Mexico. The start date was, this was, uh, yeah, 2 2. I was making sure it wasn't actually in January. So it's February 2023. Okay. Does your business own vehicles of more than 55,000 pounds? No. Does your business involve gambling or wagering? No. Does your business need to file this excise tax return? No. Does your business sell or manufacture alcohol, tobacco, firearms? No. This isn't making whether or not you're going to be regulated by other agencies. Do you have to or expect to file any employees in the next 12 months? No. I eventually hope that this business takes off and I can change to be taxed as S-Corp and then I will hire myself as an employee, but not yet. Okay, so we continue. What does your business organization do? So this can be a hard thing to try to figure out for um, some businesses because you might do more than one thing. So, um, I, this business is right now has a YouTube channel, not this one, a different YouTube channel. I think internet sales is, and, and stuff like that is most likely going to be the category that would make the most sense. So that's what I'm going to put here. It's really hard to figure out, but I want to say that it's exclusively over the internet. Um, it could also be put under some kind of consulting or some kind of business about media, you know, so it, most businesses are in multiple categories, to be honest. So that's what I'm putting there. I'm going to run and receive the letter online. Then it has all the information for me to check. So once I check over the, all the information, then I go ahead and hit the submit. When you hit the submit button, it actually pulls a database that have social security numbers and it'll check your name with social security number. So once I had a client whose thing wouldn't go through and it was because their legal name in the social security database didn't match up like just like the way it was being typed in with their social security number. So you have to make sure, you know, how is your name in the in the social security database with your social security number? So like for me, my name is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, where Potts is my middle name. It could be Potts, Wine Potts dash Weinstein is the last name like that needs to match up. And so that can happen a lot with people who have changed their name because they got married People have hyphens, people who haven't, like I had a client who her name was in a different order over what she used versus the, what was in the, in the um, social security database. So sometimes it can be not matching up. So make sure that it matches up. Great. So I got the EIN assigned and I actually always take this number and write it down somewhere, which I'm going to do right now. And then you download your confirmation letter. So this letter is something that you're going to want. This is your SS4 notification letter. Um, I'm going to put this for EPW Media LLC. Put this in my Dropbox. You want to keep this letter because you're going to need to use it to like open up your bank account and stuff. Sometimes some banks want that. And this just talks about you know, why you received this. Keep a copy of this notice in your permanent records. I don't know if you can actually get another copy of this or not. It says to safeguard that number. So here's the thing. You're going to need to put your EIN in so many different places. It is not going to be a private thing. It really isn't. Like one of the reasons I get an EIN for businesses and not use my social security number is so my social security number is more private. You can't depend on these things never getting hacked. They 100% will. You know, your EIN will eventually be in a publicly available database. So I don't really stress about that. Obviously, you want to keep on top of these things so people aren't using your numbers fraudulently. So if you have any questions about getting your EIN, feel free to post them in the comments below. And I'll try to 
point you in the right direction. I have done another video on getting your EIN and I will also post that below. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this and to follow along as I set up this side gig business. And you can join the Discord or the Patreon if you have more questions and want to connect further. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.